Hi friends, welcome back to The Intuitive Lens. We're doing the weekly energy videos for the week of July 10th through the 16th. Uh, that's Monday through Sunday. Um, things to look out for this week. One of the really big transits of the year and only happens every year and a half, two, two years is this nodal shift. If you've heard of that before, North Node and South Node, they're karmic points of the moon. North Node typically represents your consciousness, your North Star, if you will, sort of like your direction where you're headed in life, um, where maybe many lessons are, well, lessons are in both of the nodes, but just sort of like where you're headed. And then if we take that definition, the South Node is where you've been, and maybe some expertise that you're bringing in or just things to look back on, reflect on, improve upon. That's the South Node. So for the last two and a half years or so, North Node was in Taurus. It moved into Taurus um, at the start between quarter one and two of 2020. That's interesting. And, or was it 2021? Gosh, actually I can't remember, man. 2021 maybe. It was in Taurus and South Node in Scorpio. And we there was a lot of, think about the last two and a half years, there was a lot of um, activity around the, the premise of stability um, versus security, um, risk, um, trust, all of those things. Now as it moves into Aries and Libra, North Node Aries and South Node Libra, the zodiacal energy gives us um, Aries, bravery, independence, desire, excitement, boldness. And then on the flip side, Libra in the south node is putting an emphasis in how we're approaching our relationships and our collaborations. So overall, there might be this feeling of wanting to take more initiative in relationships or just for that to be in the forefront. And, or maybe, maybe for you, it's about uh, realizing that the way you had been approaching your relationships and collaborations was not actually effective for you. And you're striking out on your own and going more independent, or maybe you're taking more initiative in, in creating the, creating and nurturing the kinds of relationships that you do want. So that's just something to look forward to. You know, this shift is happening this week. Um, the nodes move in reverse and retrograde. So it's at 29 degrees um, Aries. That'll be square Pluto at the same time. Pluto, the planet of transformation. And if it's square, that's challenging. That's who's, you know, sort of the gloves are up. Pluto is really challenging us to transform. And this week is a lot about that. We have Mars and Mercury um, ingressing into their next signs. So Mars has been in Leo. Now it's going to be in Virgo. Virgo is a healing sign. It's a generous sign. It's an earth sign. Mars rules our ambition, our drive, our sex drive. Um... And I said ambitiousness already. Just sort of how we go after things. And Virgo is very thorough. And, you know, Mars is malefic too. So be aware of, you know, until the end of August, so long as Mars is in Virgo, be aware of um, how you nurture yourself and others as you strive for what you want. I think that Virgo can help us be very organized and methodical in the way that we achieve um, in terms of love. It could be that you're just very indulgent in wanting to learn as much as possible about your partner or about other people. Um, so I would say that's great, like date energy. And then also be aware that Virgo is kind of critical too. So um, try not to fall into that, you know, societal entrapment of success that success needs to look a certain way, that you need to achieve something and have it on record because Virgo likes to have things on record. 
And a lot of people are, I think, motivated. I know I am motivated by having concrete data and evidence to support my growth. Just be aware of that. There doesn't have to be growth or success. If you follow me on Instagram, not the intuitive lens, but my personal Instagram, you'll see that I had a cactus, a little baby cactus like this big for like eight months. And it finally shot out like a new, I don't know what to call it, you know, it was just one little circle and now it's got like a little bloop. So growth is invisible. It can be invisible, that's a reminder. Um, and so what else do I wanna say about this week? Sun, sextile Uranus. This is a harmonious aspect between the sun and Uranus. Uranus is innovation, revolution, change, surprise. And sun is us, it's our identity, it's our ego. And so I look at this and say, hey, you might surprise yourself this week by what comes up for you. Um, in what ways are you becoming more independent? In what ways are you putting a different emphasis or different, having a different approach to your collaborations and relationships? You might be surprised as to what kinds of new things are forming in your life. Also, Sun Sextile Uranus reminds me of this film idea of like when you're when you're writing a screenplay with characters um you know you have characters you're trying to show a story going down you show it you don't say it like bad bad scripts are ones where well and this is objective obviously but so take it for for what it resonates but in in the film world you don't want your characters to say every single thing and explain what's happening, you could just show what is happening and let the viewers sort of come to their own conclusion through this observation. I think that we have some challenging um, transits with Mercury this week, just enough so that it's like, okay, you're following your North Node, things are coming up, you're, you're figuring out, you're getting more clarity, but we still may have some trouble communicating exactly what that is, or how that relates in the relates to the context of your relationships or collaborations, you know, the, in general, the outside world, outside of you. Just show them, show them what you're able to do. Show them what you're interested in. Um, use the power of the sun, your ego, your identity to step into that new space, um, and the rest will fall into place. This transit reminds us that small change can have a significant impact. We are also, by the way, heading into the new moon in Cancer, which is Monday the 17th. Cancer rules the fourth house of our home and our origins. This is a good time to start over and to set new intentions for the things that mean the most to us. Hmm. Mercury opposite Pluto, by the way, which is... Um, which is this week, this energy. Mercury rules the day-to-day -day sort of things, communication, surface level stuff almost, and Pluto is very deep and intense. So there might, that's, this is also where I'm getting some of that challenging, potentially challenging energy um, in that it challenges us to try to express or maybe there's this desire to express deeper um, concepts very simply and it may not be possible or it just is you know kind of a profound sort of feeling and maybe it just doesn't always make sense so just show it don't say it um, since this is a time this week to be indulgent in the way you take in information and in taking in new information, try taking an opposing view to something that you're working through and you can learn a lot doing it this way. Let me see if I hit everything. Well, yes. And accept change as a part of life. Find your self-respect, go the extra mile, do the extra credit. Mars and Virgo, do the extra credit. All right, let's do our reading. Got the tarot. 
I am doing a tarot workshop this weekend on retreat. There may be a few spots left if you happen to find this and you want nine of, nine of wands. That's my card. I'm going to shuffle. If you wanted to join, you could uh, DM me and we could try to get you in. Otherwise, I am planning something new. If you are in Chicago and the northwest side of Chicago is accessible to you, you can join me at Anne's Haven. Uh, this is a program that I'm working on. It's not fully established, but after this weekend, after the retreat, I will have some more information and I can keep you posted on that. Um, I think the best way actually to stay on the up and up is to go to my website and just sign up for my newsletter. I don't really use it right now, so you're not going to get blasted with a bunch of stuff, but um, it's just so that, you know, when I do have new things coming up, I could uh, put it out to you, and yeah, you never know um, what you might receive through that that might interest you, just so you are aware. We had a bunch of cards actually come out. It almost like split into three. So what do we have? I see two sixes, the six of swords, the six of wands. So we're moving moving into calmer waters here. There's some success in that. Okay. If there's something you've been working on for a while, like in secret or just under the table or just hasn't been visible, in some way, it's showing that <clears throat> you're going to put some effort into bringing that forward. And I think that maybe it looks like you were waiting for the right time. I don't really see time as a thing here except for the Knight of Pentacles. It do There doesn't seem to be a lot of movement, but what I like about this is that the necessary work is being done and on the exterior there doesn't seem to be much movement but you see this is sort of like that story with the cactus it's happening though there's there's great success in this feeling of moving on from things that felt difficult and moving towards something that feels more uh, calm more peaceful and it's not easy though moving towards peace your you know finding your peace your self-respect in that it's not an easy task it's actually quite difficult and i can see that the, some of the ways it's been difficult is that it's been stopping you from planning things it's been stopping you from feeling like you're making progress literally the hermit is here that's virgo Okay, so Virgo is showing up. We, we know that Mars is moving into Virgo. Um, and this makes a perfect sense. The Knight of Pentacles as well is saying steady effort, hard work is what's going to get you to where you got to go. This is the week, like I was saying, to do the extra credit, put in the effort. There is success here. All right. Well, Eight of, eight of Wands come, came out again. This is like a trending card for right now. It's also a personal card of mine that speaks to me. If you want to learn how to speak to your deck, you know, like enhance your relationship with your deck, learn its voice, its cues to you, that would be one reason to join my workshop. Um, and I'll, I'll, try to, I'll try to let you know when there's more local things like that happening, not just um, on retreat. So, okay, nine of, eight of, well, eight of wands, page of pentacles, eight of pentacles, double eights, page of cups in reverse, the lovers in the center, queen of cups, seven of cups, two of swords, the empress in reverse.
The first thing that I notice is that there is some sudden inspiration that moves you towards this bit of movement, this coming out of the hermit energy and bringing something forward. This could be self-development. And if it is self-development, what I see is that you are noticing how your relationships, again, South Node Libra, right? We're looking at our relationships as a reflection of who we are and what we put out, what we put forth. So looking at our relationships and the quality of our relationships totally is, um, I don't want to say the word fodder, but fodder, like it's information, Virgo, <laughs> data points <laughs> for knowing just how we're showing up. What, what is our responsibility in the equation of our relationships with others? So I can see that there has been maybe some disconnect from a, a little bit of disconnect here from maybe someone's feelings or just that there have, there has been maybe like not a super big deal, but emotion, either emotionally unstable or just kind of flighty hot and cold sort of feeling. Um, I feel like this is partially to do with the Neptune retrograde. It could be, but regardless of astrological influence, what's showing through the cards is the seven of cups. We're not sure which direction to take because there's actually quite a lot of options open to you now. So I think that your job is to actually follow your inspiration, this first card, Eight of Wands, this is what brings the movement. Think about what moves you. What moves you to put in the effort? What moves you to initiate some sort of change for yourself? This is where the North Node Aries comes in. We have to be in tune and in touch with the part of ourselves that does initiate that's how this change is going to come about whatever whatever it is you're building this is the energy of building something i don't want to say like secure but essentially more sustainable because it's driven the the engine is more passionate and feeling um and to me, passionate and feeling almost feel like opposite energies in this reading. The passion part is the like energy needed to initiate and to break through. And the feeling part is the more of the soft and intuitive, more of, more of like those Cancerian qualities that allow us to have more intimate knowledge of ourselves. And it's kind of like that bit of that level of honesty that is required in order to reflect a clearer image. Just think about it this way. The more you're honest with somebody, and if people are mirrors for us, they're going to show you more honesty in return. At least, hopefully, that's the goal, right? The lovers and the queen of cups. It could be that for some of you, there might be somebody coming in like the page of pentacles. It's a small offer. This, I mean, and it, it would be an earth sign perhaps, but um, it doesn't appear that it's going to go anywhere necessarily at this time because there is still there is still some sort of block and the empress is and the, the reading ends with the empress in reverse so we're heading towards um by the way that's venus ha huh. we're heading towards a venus retrograde in leo um venus is also taurus and libra and so that's the south node libra energy there again I think that in during this time, independence is valued. And even if you're in a relationship, let's say, like it's not like your relationship 
is going to end or, you know, I do think it's a very challenging time for relationships, especially new relationships. I think that this is not necessary. If you're asking my opinion, it's not a time to be getting into new relationships um, without, you know, either vetting, you know, clear vetting or just making sure that communication is really, really clear. Um, Use this time to really get to know somebody more intimately than maybe you otherwise would. The passion is there, but the feeling has also got to be there. That kind of um, doing the work to see under the layers, uh, not just what's on the surface. Let me get just a few cards to close out. Next weekend, we're going to talk more about the Venus retrograde because that starts on July 22nd. Any final advice? I saw a card almost jump out. Six of Pentacles. That's the third six. Do you see how it went over there? Six, six, six. I saw six, six, six two or three times just taking a drive this morning. The Chariot in Reverse. I feel like the challenge has been or... There is some, there is, this is, this is a weird feeling because it's like the change isn't small, but it has huge implications and it's almost like, yeah, we are feeling for something to feel right. And that rightness is actually a certain sense of balance. It's like waiting for the right time. For things to, I don't know, either to calm down or to feel well enough or confident enough um, or separated enough from the ego in our brains, like our thoughts and our, our, our more challenging emotions, like low vibe, like, you know, anger or jealousy, like wanting to work through like those lower emotions in order to have the kind of clarity needed to come forward or, or something like that. One more, please. King of Wands in reverse. Yeah, it's because... You have strong feelings. There's strong feelings here, but in order to associate them with a with any bit of clarity, I guess you want to know if it's gonna, if it'll still be here tomorrow. If it is, it gonna, you know, this is all part of the transformation. Is realizing that there's maybe new, um, new data points to associate with what your desires are. New data points to associate with what your dreams are, what ambitions you have moving forward. This is going to be how you take that, how you take that information and create opportunities to, for learning, creating opportunities for self-development. That's what this reading is about, okay? That's, that's what's showing here. If you have any questions, um, Feel free to let me know in the comments below any, um, I don't know, reflections, if you will. Otherwise, I just say, uh, leave this here and say thank you for joining me this week and every week that you do come back. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.